Well, the chip sector in general has been getting a boost this week. It's in part Micron. It's in part a new report from Bain and Company, which highlights that the market for AI products and services could hit up to $990 billion by 2027. To talk more about that is David Crawford. He's Bain & Company Global Technology Cloud Services Practice Chairman and one of the authors of that report that got so much attention this week. So David, thank you so much for being here. Happy to be here, thanks for having me. So as you know, there has been an enormous amount of attention on this Gen AI wave, and presumably that's why you guys decided to dig a little more, bit more deeply into it. I'm curious, as you look at that up to 55% annual demand increase through 2027, where you see that coming from specifically, how that's going to sort of play out, and also how it's going to change over time. Yeah, great question. I think we see uh, three kind of broad pockets of growth. One is at the halo uh, end, at high end of the market, where the large hyperscalers are, are racing to kind of uh, you know build out the best capabilities. That's generating an enormous amount of demand that works its way back through the supply chain and creates. Um, you know, just a, a shortages in a, in a spectrum of spaces. The second is enterprise adoption, where, you know, we know the trends are smaller models, more specialized models, open source, et cetera, but uh, likewise requires computational capability. In some cases, they're using special purpose compute and so forth, that, that's the second big pocket. And then the third is the, uh, you know, the independent software vendors themselves building these capabilities directly into their products and running them in their own data centers. Uh, so between the three, there's just actually a lot of demand, and and those three will interact over the coming years as well. Do you see um, AI as being sort of fragmented looking ahead, uh, David, globally? Meaning, is it going to be um, developed and deployed very differently depending on the countries, geographies? Yeah, uh, uh, important question. Uh, we think relative to say something like a cloud, a cloud disruption or big data, there will be more uh, interest in uh, sovereign ownership, sovereign control, sovereign uh, domicile data centers, and so forth. Because you know it's broadly perceived that AI will be quite different, and that it'll it'll control culture, access to health and welfare, things like that. And so uh, we think that the the uh, sort of uh, state interests will play a much bigger role in the ultimate location of where all this occurs. I, I was also struck by um, some of your research in this report on the size of different enterprises and what they're spending and, and how much that spending has changed over the past year. And, you know, the bulk of enterprises out there are on the smaller side, so they are spending less as a function of their size, but are they going to be left behind? Are they spending enough? How are you thinking about that? Yeah, we'll, we'll see as time tells. But yeah, we were astonished to see the rate at which, uh, for example, in the report we published, the, the number of companies are spending over $100 million in their annual IT budget alone on, on AI. And with large enterprises, that's doubled. But it's not uh, confined uh, specifically to large enterprises. Smaller enterprises, whatever the level they are spending at, has actually do doubled as well. And so uh, uh, you can pick any kind of uh, spend or IT budget threshold, and, and they're, they're almost uniformly increasing their spend. 